Good morning, this is Sam in Wyoming. It's early October. I'm standing out in my wood lot here and it's pretty chilly. So we're going to go in the shop in just a second. And I've kind of threatened to do some videos on practicing with wood turning. And my first topic is going to be thread chasing. And I'm going to look at some of the woods that you can practice with and some of the other materials if you're a thread chaser. So let's go in where it's a little bit warmer. Thanks. Now I really feel one of the most neglected areas in wood turning is that of practicing. How do you practice wood turning techniques, your tool work and different things like that? This is a, a cord set of bowls that I recently finished. And let's take a look at the biggest one. Now, one approach available is simply to look at every cut as a practice, down to the final cut you make on the outside of the inside of the bowl. This is box elder, very pretty wood, it comes from a burl. I've got it finished with some oil. Now, I've turned lots of bowls, probably hundreds of bowls, and this spring and summer, I've cored probably seven or eight sets of bowls like this, and it's good practice. But thread chasing is a little bit different in that when you're doing a little project like this, this little lidded box, you have to use wood like boxwood, lignum vitae, mopani. Those woods are all excellent for thread chasing, but they're a little bit costly. So I'm going to show you some things I do, and I still do that, even though I'm pretty good at thread chasing, I still practice. When I get a new tool, uh, brand new thread chasing tools can be a little bit aggressive. So I'm going to show you some things, I'm going to move my camera, and uh, we'll take a look at some of the different materials you can practice with in thread chasing. Okay, you're looking at a little section of boxwood. It's a little log. And for boxwood, um, it's about three or four dollars a running inch for a log of boxwood, depending on the diameter. I try to get the smallest diameter, maybe, maybe two or three inches, because uh, otherwise there's a lot of waste in that. So there's a little box I showed you a second ago. And to practice with boxwood, pretty expensive. I never practice with boxwood, but I'll, I'll show you some things you can do. Let me, let me show you some of the items that you can uh, practice with and probably make some projects from. Um, this is a section of Corian, like countertop material. There's no grain, very hard, very dense. And one of the problems with this stuff is how do you cut a little round section to practice with or use in a project. And I've actually used some of this in uh, threaded inserts. And some of my earlier thread chasing videos, I probably show some of this. I've got a little uh, hole cutter for my drill press that uh, I clamp this down securely and I just uh, uh, drill some sections out of that and I get little rounds. That's good stuff to, to work with. And you can actually do a project with this material. So, <clears throat> solid counter surface material, and you can usually get that for free someplace. Um, this is an acrylic pen blank. And I don't know if you can see the threads on that, but I was just messing around one day. And this is maybe three quarters of an inch. And you can actually do a little pill box or something from uh, an acrylic pen blank. And it takes a beautiful thread, so you can practice with this. You can also make a project from that. This is a piece of hard maple. And I've actually had pretty good luck with, with hard maple. And, um, you know, I've made some projects and some boxes out of that. But it's another wood that's probably a pretty good wood to practice with. This is a, a section of epoxy two-part epoxy that I've added some color to, and it takes a really, really nice thread. The problem with that is it's a little bit expensive, okay? The, the cost of two-part epoxy, and to make a project out of that, you might as well buy some boxwood. 
or some other woods you can chase threads in. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up in my lathe a section of candle. This is just a really narrow little candle and believe it or not you can really practice with that uh, especially on the, uh, the male thread. PVC pipe. This is a piece of Trex decking. Now I have chucks with jaws small enough to grasp that little piece of Trex decking. However, I'm going to do a class where the students have a two inch uh, jaw on their chucks. I've asked them to supply that. So I got to have something a little bit uh, bigger in diameter. So I've just taken some 2x4 Trex decking that I picked up really cheap. This stuff is expensive, so unless you can find a good bargain on it. Uh, ran that through my joiner. And you can see right here I've got, I've got one section of this all clamped up with some Gorilla Glue. I need to clean that off. Let's go from this and we'll mill that down and make a, make a square section and turn that round. And this will be the first item we'll practice thread chasing with. Now I've got an overhead view of my piece of Trex decking here. And I'm going to mostly do the male thread because it's just a lot easier to demonstrate and to see. So the first thing I need to do, position my tool rest. I got it in the right position. I got it in the right height. I got it about a finger's depth from my, my project. And what that allows me to do is to adjust my tool, okay, up and down. I just raise my tool handle or lower it. And that, that gives me a little bit of adjustment. So the first thing I need to do is put a chamfer on this with my point tool. And I'm going to go up to chasing, or uh, excuse me, I'm going to go up to turning speed. The chamfer is very important on the, uh, the place where you're going to start your thread. And this stuff really turns very nicely. It's too bad it's not very pretty. So here's another aspect of my practice for today is I got a new thread chasing set. This is a, a crown tool I get from Hartville Tool in Ohio. And if anybody's out that way, go see Hartville Tool. Uh, it's just an awesome place. Now I can see my, my tool rest is a little high. Okay, so I'm going to practice here. And if you're new to thread chasing, you want to get a little bit of a rhythm going. And the very first touch of your thread chaser needs to be very, very gentle. And try to go all the way through with your, your thread chaser. Start on the second or third tooth. And you can see the shavings I'm getting. That's exactly what you need in boxwood and different very dense hardwoods will give you that very nice uh, kind of a spiral shaving. If you're getting dust, something's wrong, your tool isn't sharp, you're using the wrong kind of wood. Now, I really don't even need my left hand in there. What I'm doing is I'm putting a little pressure into the piece of wood and that's that's actually cutting the threads. Thread chasers are scrapers but they do need to cut. Okay now I've got a piece of PVC pipe in there and what I've done is I've simply Scrape this with my skew chisel to make that as flat as possible and round. And I'm going to take my point tool 
Again, put a little chamfer on there. Go down to chasing speed. And again, I'm just got my tool at 45 degrees. I'm just lightly touching my my uh, PVC pipe. And what I did on the inside of that is I chased a female thread. Now I've got a little section of candle and I've got to give a shout out to Mike Peace. He's a fellow thread chaser. That's where I learned this technique. Mike does classes on thread chasing and thread chasing demos. And he kind of turned me on to this aspect of, of practicing thread chasing. So I'm going to put this into my, my pin jaws. And I've got that back there, oh, probably an inch and a half or so. Tighten that down. And adjust my tool rest a little bit. And the first thing I need to do, it's a little wobbly, so I'm going to, I'm going to get my skew chisel as a scraper. Now the idea of using a candle is so that you develop a nice gentle touch when you're chasing a thread. So I'm going to put my chamfer on the front of this. Come around there with my point tool. Now I think I'm probably too high on my, my tool rest. You go down to chasing speed. Three hundred, three twenty. Okay. And again, I'm going to just very, very lightly touch that chamfer. And. The shavings always tell a good story. Of course, we're, we're chasing wax, basically. And if you can do this with a candle, that'll develop a nice, um, gentle approach to your, your threads. <clears throat> now, at this point, my, my groove is established and my thread chaser is simply following that groove. And as I go to this point here, um, I need to go just a little bit farther every time. And, and right here, my threads are established. So I don't really need to start back there. So I'm going to start here. Pretty cool. I like that. It, that's kind of fun. <clears throat> now one more point I'll make, and I'm just about to the end of this practice demonstration, is when you're to the, the perpendicular stage with your thread chaser, you want to be chasing with the lead tooth. And what I do is I actually go to, to perpendicular and go just you know, like a half a degree beyond that. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but um, just just so it's noticeable. And I really want to be chasing with that lead tooth. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I'm going to just keep going until this just uh, totally disappears. Okay, we'll see you next time. Thanks.